just bugging. Ease it down now. Ready? All right, come on. Oh, hold up. Okay. All right. Here hey, hey, hey. Sweet. It'll look nice once it's all cleaned up and back in there all painted up and all it's gonna look sweet oh, and yeah. now i have a question with the tins do you want to go with the same color of the car because i mean we've done a, a couple engines where we've gone with the same color for Paint the, the tins. engine the same color yep which the fan shroud and and those tins and this tins but like if you did um maybe like a two-tone you know how you got the black bumper and the blue yeah if you did that with the tins that'd be kind of cool yeah, like blue I know this this one they're kind of beat up and scratched up and stuff like that. He's got, new, he's got new valve covers and gaskets for you. Mm -hmm. So when you put so it back together, yeah. you just put all that on there. Oh, that's nice. He's got that pulley. Sort of. yeah, he's got a little bit of goodies. Yeah, in there. it's a bunch oh, of new parts. Oh, yeah. And those are backwards. <laughs> So it's just like the 79. Like said, yeah, yeah, I told him like the 79. Yeah. 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 yeah but and that's are, why they're that's why they're leaking. Too. That's why they're those leaking. Are garbage. I've never used these plastic ones. Yeah. I just use them for, you know, yeah. you and put it on the But see the big like end, that. the big end hits your super 10. That's a super 10 there and that big piece right there hits it and it's kicked. Won't let it slide. But see the thing is is that your oil goes through the rod gets up here and you know lubricates the head and then it rolls back down this when you put them in backwards the oil doesn't even go back into the case oh it hits the lip don't because it because you have a big piece going in the small piece so it runs right out and doesn't go you up need, you need a small piece on the, the on the inside in the inside or yeah on the on inside the, yeah so or, it can flow through and yeah on the down. outside and yeah yeah i'm not all there today <laughs> Got you. so when we get to it this week we'll do a compression chest first and those things, see this one, they have the, the holes. He wants to get the ones without the holes. Yeah. What are you talking about? get another pan for it. Oh, yeah. He's just taking sheet metal and, and fill them underneath in it and, and drill it. screws through them and screw them right up to it. But, well, you got that filter in it too. I mean, you, know, you got the bigger carburetor on it. Press I, don't, it I don't know if I, I bought the, uh, to rebuild the carburetor. I don't, I don't know if I bought the right one. It's a 34 pick, doesn't it? It looks like the right kit, but. Pick three. Yeah, it's a 34 pick. What are all the parts you bought? In the box. Oh, you gotta have them look at that door. Oh, yeah, you yeah, gotta look I at that door too. The, yeah, that door's gotta be. The, the, the pin I, wonder. I, mean, I barely got it shut without messing it up. It's yeah, I don't open it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ask uh, Rick what he would yeah, because I have never had to pull one off, they, thank they God. Should, they should have done that before they painted the damn thing. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's a real pain in the yeah, ass. Yeah, because I mean, at least you could have heated it before you painted it and get, get them broke loose and lubricated them. I have but a now, tool somewhere I've never used. Yeah, the special tool it, 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 to pop these pins I've out. I've never used it before. Yeah. I've never had to. Every time I, open, I had a car that I restored, they the doors open and close yeah. fine. That one's and good. I would just take the catch out and paint the whole car yeah. with the doors on it. Because getting those Phillips screw heads out, they just end up stripping, stripping out. end up drilling them, tapping, and all that. Pain in the ass. Yeah, it's poor design yeah. with that. They should have put like Allen screws. Uh, at least a torque. Well, I don't think they had torque heads back then. Yeah, they so. probably didn't. No, yeah. but they had Allen's back then. Yeah, you'd think they'd have used an Allen. Yeah, but you know, Phillips was a car. big thing back. He does then. have two mirrors that he'd like to get on, installed on there. They're they would, actually mounted. They'd, they'd go like mount, right there. They mount somewhere on the side. They're in the box. They're new. Yeah, he got some extra goodies for you. So you got Sidewinder exhaust back there? Yeah, he, had, yeah. he does. Mm. He has a smaller one, um, unlike Fred's. He's quite all washed. The mirror? Yeah, look at them. They're cool. Yeah, I thought they were pretty neat. Yeah, I always like the mirrors that don't go on the doors. You have to sit in there and figure out 
where that looks the best because that's such a real low where they put them up like that. Very good. I've seen them put them right there. Right there. That's exactly where I've seen them put them. That's where you can see it. Well, you got to, yeah, you got to be able to see it through the windshield. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, that's And it better. would look better right on the edge of the you trim. You can't even see from there, though. You can't even see. Uh, you can't even see uh, this from there. Well, I know when you're down here. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, you can see that. That's fine. That's cool. That's where they did it, right? Hey guys, so uh, Sunday, 1973 Super Beetle came in for some repairs. Nice car, I like the little thin runners on the front, bigger wider rims on the back, sharp, and then the no blinkers on the fenders. And the blinkers are in the headlights, kind of like uh, the uh, 66 back there. And the flat black bumper is kind of like the orange crush, but uh, he's probably going to have me put the flat black on a brand I like. Uh, ends with a Z, not flat, but flats. And you put it on with no reducer in it, and it goes on nice stick with a nice texture to it and a high build kind of. And uh, you know, put about four coats on it, and it'll hide some of these imperfections on it. We could sand blast these again before we put it on there and make it look as good as possible. That has can flat black, so of course it's not going to be as good as what comes out of a, a gun been mixed with an activator so um got a problem here with the door well of course it's common on the passion door and you don't have a lot of riders but it is really stiff in the pin and if you see it's it's going to create a big problem here should have been dealt with before it got painted and so the only thing we can do is uh spray it with some pb blaster carefully work it back and forth and keep doing it and doing it while it's here and should free up so what we're going to do first like we always do first before we deal with anything motor related on anyone's car is a compression chest and normally that's where we start but the customer has apparently had some oil leaks on the push rod tubes and you know disassembled everything to replace them with adjustable or spring-loaded ones and the nylon ones are on it and then there's one of the uh, aluminum spring-loaded ones on it and uh, they're in backwards common thing I see and the valves I was told he is you know he wasn't very familiar with uh, adjusting the valves not everyone is and they felt they were too tight so we we're not going to turn this over they didn't do it. it's popping and everything they didn't do it they pushed it off the trailer so what we're going to do first i'm gonna jack it all up got some things to do rick's going to come out here and take over and uh going to do a valve adjustment first get the readings of what the valves are at and then do it correctly and then we'll go on to the compression test have all the plugs removed open the carburetor up and check each cylinder and get a good reading on it push on the pulley and pull back and uh, it feels really tight i couldn't feel any movement in the end plate but we'll put a dial indicator on it when we get it out of the car but first we're going to see what we've got here so stay tuned hey rick how's it going on the 73 super beetle oh well <laughs> we've had successes and failures mostly successes um <laughs> this bug has swivel feet adjusters on the rocker arms on the swivel feet adjusters you've got a little steel ball and a socket that rolls around that swivels when the rocker arms move through their level of motion and those little balls have a flat bot on them. And if you don't have that flat bot clocked just right, so it's on the valve stem, then you get problems with getting them to adjust. Like they cannot back off enough, got constant pressure on it. Right. And that's what we found here. So the valves were too tight because the ball wasn't clocked right. That's right. And we couldn't go on with compression tests because uh, they were having popping issues and everything. And we oh, don't- I, I imagine so. <laughs> well, we don't want to be responsible for that. So we got to evaluate before we go anywhere with the repairs on one of these motors so that customer knows what they had when it came here you know when, when they're clock right you've got about eight thousandths of an inch of slot that you can adjust out of and when they're not clocked right they're opening your valves about probably ten thousandths of an inch of the valve is open right so then that's probably also why you couldn't feel that much compression in that's it. exactly why all right the valves are never closing all the way so as you were turning over you were like wow this doesn't have much compression at all that's exactly yeah, it. and he said it ran like great you know before he messed with them so we got to get that right which is a little bit more on trying to evaluate it more time so so you're good on this side huh yep we got number one and number two done all right so um, they were like i mean it's even hard to say what they were because you couldn't even get a feeler gauge in it because the ball was in the wrong position yeah 
I, I couldn't even back it off enough to get the valve to close it off. Wow. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't go to try to turn in this thing over. What was done before we got it was done before we got it. So Yeah, it's got some issues. Yeah, you said you got the exhaust. Go over the issues you ran into because I wasn't the one that well, saw them all. Of course, uh, the belt blew. Best I can tell, there's about three out of eight exhaust nuts holding exhaust on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and that's the reason for it. The automatic choke's not hooked up, so the choke never shuts off. Yeah, it's a little, but the belt. Yeah, got a yeah. floppy belt, which yeah. has been that way long enough now that it's pretty thin and pretty glazed. And that doesn't help your cooling system, let alone your electrical, but yeah. the electrical, it's the cooling system that matters. Yeah, and this bug has a lot of electrical. I bet you it would appreciate a good working alternator. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, especially with power windows, power locks. Uh, what was the deal with the cap, the well, starter it's, cap? Yeah, it's kind of, I've never seen a cap like this. Um, it's not correct. No, it is not the right cap for this car. So it looks like somebody just pulled something off the shelf that was close and made it work. Yeah, it looks like it had where you could put bolt holes or yeah a different retainer yeah if you look here That's you can weird. see the bolt hole yeah huh. and they don't normally have ears like that on them they they got spring clips that hold them right. on yeah and they, he mentioned this he's going to get another 10 or either i can close it up with some plates and some uh, self-tapping screws yeah before we paint them but uh all right so we'll get on with that and then we'll figure out what the compression is and uh there's no way we could have done a compression test on it before no yeah that's why they kind of gave me a heads up on it and pat should be in here tomorrow afternoon and we'll yank this motor out for me. All right. okay we're checking the compression on this let's see what we got yep number one cylinder go ahead and turn him over whenever you're ready all right now 125 130 got a noise in it yeah imagine with all that shit missing bolts and shit but you mean in the bottom end yeah it sounds like it's got a lower end noise maybe a wrist pin yeah get to the next one here okay here we go on number two cylinder all right yeah 130 <laughs> is that that fucking loose <laughs> no wrench involved man Okay, let's pull everything, it off and then we'll do it again. Everything is loose on this motor. This could have been that clumping around since it's all loose. <laughs> that's funny. The things you find. Yeah, that's what it was. It's gone now. No alarm. We're doing so far so good for a refresh. Uh, we are seeing. Um, it should be anti seize, but it possibly, you know, can see that in the camera. See all the chunks on it. I don't know if there's any JB weld in these, but you said you had a hard time getting number one out. Yep. How was this? About the same? Uh, that one was a lot easier. I mean, once it loses its torque, you should be able to do it. As like, soon as it broke over loose, it screwed right out nice and easy. Number but one. This one, but one didn't. Number one was not that way. Number one resisted two thirds of the way out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got another one stiff as hell here. Always leaves you to wonder when they come out like this. Not hard to cross thread. And I, I'll admit I've done this. But maybe it's just an old anti-seize. Yeah, that's old anti-seize. Just maybe too much. <laughs> Number four cylinder. All right, 135. Well, at least it's so far. It's very close. Last one, number three, the hottest one. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, 135? Hell yeah. Maybe 140? Hell yeah. Decent compression on all four cylinders. Yeah, I'm impressed on that because there's definitely this needed to be attended to. No pun against the owner, but not everybody knows how to work on these and there's a lot of issues that, like you said, it's surprising that the motor survived, you know, with all these deficiencies. Yeah. Minor deficiencies, may, may I say, you know. And, and, you know, like you said, nothing against the owner. It's a nice car. And, and he did the right thing. Yep. We'll get it right for him and everybody be happy. Exactly. All right. Well, until I get with the owner and discuss what we went through and then get to go on pulling the motor out tomorrow, which I'm sure we will be, so... All right, guys, I got the motor out of the 73. We passed the compression test, but a little questionable. Got to get the dial indicator on this. Yeah, it's got some crazy stuff on the back. All this electric tape and mesh put over that. Well, we'll have to get a dial indicator on it and check it out. See what we got for in play. See if it's possible for a refresh, but kind of appears to be too much in play. Went ahead and put our tool on here to check the in play and take it back off. So you can pull it all the way back and back this up some. Get it right on it. Push it in. This is a 10 and 
which is a nine. Nine goes in there nice and snug, and an eight slides right in there. So it's nine thousandths, which is beyond refresh. The motor needs to be rebuilt. Well, I have to inform the customer. So definitely most likely a line bore and a thrust cut, which we're expecting. So I called the owner yesterday and he proved to go to a rebuild. He's gonna stick with the same jugs and pistons and we'll replace the rings on it and hone out the cylinders, jugs, whatever you wanna call them. And replace the bearings, the cam bearings, and put everything back together. Sandblast all the tins, paint them the color of the car. So this turns out to be a rebuild, not a refresh. Rick break the whole motor down today and then I'll run it up to Frank. As you can see, Rick has disassembled it. So what'd you find? Well, as we suspected, it needs to be line board. That's this line you see right here. What that's telling us is the case has collapsed under the bearing a bit. And then you get your bearings will start walking back and forth on it and work these pins loose. And once that happens, the case is junked. So, so we got it just in time because it doesn't we, appear that pins are loose. So you're going to have to grab them and pull them out, huh? Yeah, we caught it just in time. It would look to me like this one will go in, get a line bore, and we'll get this thrust cut, um, come back to us like new. You have to buy the right size bearings to compensate for the material that you remove out of the case. Okay. Um, I mean, you had a few studs. Yeah, we had three of the main studs came out. I've, I've never encountered that, but they, they didn't strip out. They just screwed out, so. It's just been beating itself. Yeah, um, this case does have shuffle pins. That's a good thing. What case is this? I think it's a B5, if I remember right. I'd have to look to make sure on that. Okay, uh, and you said the, the, the jugs, one of the jugs was leaking? Yeah, way I one of the pistons was saturated in oil. That's a good indication that the rings are failing on that cylinder. And they were real sharp, huh? So yeah, yeah, rings were sharp. So, so we're going to reuse the cylinders and the pistons and put new rings on it. Yeah, yeah. This customer doesn't want to put a gazillion dollars into this. Right. He just wants his uh, bug fix. So. Right. Fred went to a liquidation cell in Fort Myers. Let me pull it up on my phone. It was Robert's Quality Auto Body Volkswagen Shop liquidation cell down in Fort Myers. And he brought back a bunch of cases, a Type 3 complete motor out of a notchback, which is going to be great for us uh, with the uh, 63 notchback. Give us an example. We can take the best of two. We have two motors for it. So that's what we're going to do today is we're going to take the case for the 73 Super Beetle and get it line board and thrust cut at Frank Valone's machine shop. Which you met Frank in the V-Dub Swap Meet. At the V-Dub Swap Meet. He's a machine shop and the builder for V-Dubs of Ocala. And then uh, uh, we're going to take one of the other cases that does need line board. Here's another one in there that doesn't need line board inside this box here. We're going to take another one that does need line board. It's not that bad, but we want to make a fresh build out of that. We want to build a 1776. So we're going to have Frank take care of that one, kill two birds with one stone, and we'll have that case ready for the next time for some 90.5 cylinders to go in it. So we're going to have it cut for 90.5 cylinders too. So let's go out and look at those motors. So, that's the 73 Super Beetle case, which it had excessive in play, 10 thousandths. So uh, the owner decided that yes, it's best to have it line board, dust cut, and rebuilt. So that one's gonna get a complete rebuild. And this is the one that we're going to have Frank take care of the line boring and thrust cut and cut this for 90.5 cylinders so we can build a 1776. So we're off to Frank Malone's about an hour away from here. So we'll see you there. Hey, look, you see that up there, man? Wow, that's a beautiful sky, isn't it? No, your big head moving out of the way. I'm trying <laughs> to zoom in on the beetles. <laughs> you see the beetles? This is my beak. Beak. <laughs> so we are here. First time we've ever been out here to Frank's shop. I'm looking forward to getting out here. Oh, look at the moomoos. Look at the moomoo. Do they have church out there? Mr. Jerry's sitting on the fence line. Yeah, yeah. Well, your temple is wherever you want your temple to be. All those white cows are pretty. Hi, babies. Moo. I smell Big Mac. That's messed up. Moo, moo. Look at all this graveyard stuff. What is that? What does that say? Old Rusty or something? 
That's funny. What is that? It looked like it's built on top of a Bradley GT box. You can hear my quiet challenges coming up. <laughs> so how you doing? I'm busy. You busy? You didn't have to use them. I stay pretty busy. <laughs> What's this one that's going in a Super Beetle I got? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. This is one I'm building for my... That's one that used to have a blower on it and a gear, but I've made it in 1915 under a fuel injection this time. Oh, cool. And this little gray bottom with the... This is just going to be a supercharged 1640s going in that dune buggy there. Sweet. Me and a partner of mine. We do a little bit of everything. <laughs> I miss my big shop. I wish I'd have got in into bugs more. I was more in muscle cars then and then a downsize. So I have a full machine shop. Two lanes, milling machine, transfer mill, Sweet. standard, every kind of welder you can think of. Definitely not cheap to have all that equipment. Well, it's stuff that I've had for years. And yeah, years. but they don't make it like they used to. No, this is just for me here. Oh, that's cool. Here. Cool, cool. Cool. That's sweet. That is sweet. Nice. I don't know if they'll fit you, but here you go. Oh, yeah. hey, thanks, thanks, man. Thank that's you. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, man. That's cool. <laughs> so is that your actual that's that's website? That's your website? website? Oh, cool. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know. Five or six years. Oh. It shows all the stuff. You, did you know it was this one? No. I'm not that much on the website stuff, but it's got pictures of projects that we've done right. through the years. From We started out building like rat rods and stuff like that, and then the Volkswagens took off and we couldn't keep track because if you notice, once you get a Volkswagen, you get a Volkswagen. Oh, yeah. Every, everyone, <laughs> every vehicle that can be closed up, like motorhomes, mm -hmm. are full of Volkswagen parts. Mm -hmm. Underneath them, inside all them vans, all them cars, it's all just Volkswagen parts that just seem to never end. Oh, yes. When you buy one Volkswagen, it's just parts after parts, after parts after parts. It doesn't, it never fails because you just, they just keep piling up the stuff that you can get them. I got a couple. couple they make Bradley, like rabbits, Bradley you know? GTs over there. <laughs> yeah, Bradley couple GTs. Couple dune buggy bodies, couple dune buggy frames. I got my gear up in the Quanza up there. Just got stuff there. That's what that. I need to do, make a mini Quanza. Yeah. Huh? And then you could put them under. You could buy complete AC kits from Miami Compressor down in, down south. Mm -hmm for like 349 bucks. Wow. That's everything. But you have to have to have the tool to make your own hose. What do you put in the condenser on the standard Beatles? The condenser? Mm -hmm. I put it up on top of the transmission. Mm -hmm. And I blow a fan down over the transmission, right in right in the package tray underneath. Right. It'll fit right in there. And I put a fan right on top of it. Oh, cool. And I blow the fan down over the condenser and the transmission. There you mm. go. Never had a problem. So then it's basically Recycling and it's really short. <laughs> then, it's then, taking then it all out your there. lines are really short too because you're right there at yeah. the motor already. You don't have Saves to have you money too. Yeah. And see, and then on a on a on a Super Beetle, you can't really get that thing underneath the dash unless you buy a Super Beetle one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But an aftermarket one, I just put it under the package tray in the back. Mm -hmm. Have it blow forward. You never had a problem. It's mm -hmm. not like you have but, a bunch of cubic space. But you can get a them kits really cheap. Like Everybody, see, people un don't understand. Everybody makes stuff for the Type 1. Mm -hmm. But if they don't, they're not making that. If it's anything else, it's going to cost you more money. So you have to make sure that you quote it properly because you can get caught with your head down so fast. Yeah, I'm <laughs> learning that. I'm just so, trying to weed it, out the ones that I underpriced and, and, and if, before. If anything is iffy, you can't rebuild it because it'll blow up on you. All right. Here. You could build it for yourself and drive it for 100,000 miles. If you put it in a customer's car in two weeks, it'll be back and it'll be in pieces and, and you'll eat all that stuff and that's what it'll cost you. All right. So that's why if something lo doesn't look right and I'm, I'm machining it and it doesn't work, it doesn't work. I just, and I, and, I and I tell everybody it's... that, like some people get mad at me because of, well, I could take it to Joe and he'll he'll machine it. Then you need to take it to Joe. Yeah, and, and you need to and you need to get it machined by him. And then when it comes back and and, and it blows up or something happens to it, I hope Joe's, Joe's going to be there for you. <laughs> Joe, Joe ain't Joe no, ain't going to be there because, for you at all because you're the one putting it together. Yeah, yeah. That's the yeah. problem. Once it leaves here, oh no, gonna, I yeah, I know it's I'm a saying, machinist. Well, once, yeah, well, once it leaves here, they're going to be at you. 
Yeah. You're going to have to bitch at I've me. went through three. I, I don't care about you. You can bitch at me all you want because you're, you're not, you know, but right. that customer's, and now you got Facebook. You got all the, and them suckers. And they will talk all about you. Yeah. yeah. That's why I tell people when they leave here, I tell them, if you got a problem, you got my telephone number, you need to call me first. Right. Before you start telling everybody on Facebook how something went wrong. Because right. sometimes the something went wrong is your something. Right. The thing is, like, when I do something, I'll, uh, I'll check it over before mm -hmm. I do any machining. And if it's, and if there's something iffy about it, I'm going to tell you right away. Right. And then you're going to make the decision whether you want you're to do it. Help. Beetles, they have a bees for friends. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, that ain't cool. Look at he climbed right oh. in the housing. So see, you never know where they're hiding. You never. He's got a nest behind that light because it protects him from the weather. Yeah, I don't like wasps. Me and my dad are both allergic to wasps and bees. And I mean, I'm not sure if you guys saw this video years ago, but this is the reason why I don't like wasps. What year is this? That's the 65. Oh, wow, it actually is? This this is, is not okay. This needs to stop now. Oh. It was at this moment that he knew he f***ed up. I just got stung by a wasp. I honestly wish I would have kept recording after that incident, but I ended up going into anaphylactic shock and had a little bit of water in a water bottle and had a Benadryl, but I ended up being fine. Let's see. Fernando Auto Electric. Ragged nasty. Flake. This thing might be past the square limit on the thrust. He's gonna have to let me know what bearings were in it. Is that 9.0 right now? That's already 80,000. Mm. That's already too much. Mm. No, it absolutely okay, well then it's past its limit. Like there's really not too much you could do with this block. The boat anchor, really. <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> to tell you. Well, that's why we sent it to you, so we know. Okay, well that one I'm not gonna do nothing with, but the other one I'll take a look at. This one you definitely need to do something about finding another block or something. Welcome to the VW 101 case class by Air Cool Fool. So really to, to check a block it needs to be cleaned for one thing. And Spot, then put you know, back put, together. And, and at least bolted back together with the main studs, the big ones. Right. Torqued. That way you can see in here. All right. Because, see, it doesn't look like much, but any kind of, of movement any kind of uh, wear marks on here meant it was moving here. Right, right. And anytime you get moving, that's when they put shuttle pins in and stuff for mm -hmm. high performance ones to keep mm -hmm. that from happening. And uh, without it being cleaned and put back together, you're never gonna know if this block was any good. Right. But me just just feeling this, I say no. Right. Just because it's it's at least 60 thousandths, <laughs> and 60 thousandths is gonna be a, the last cut on it to begin with. Right, right. You should always take all this kind of stuff off out of here. Yeah, this was and last make, minute thing. But I'm just saying, always yeah. take it off. Cause it's gonna cost more them, anyways. Pull, hmm. No, but pull them out of there, that, because if they're, they're stuck in there, then it's that's, trash that's, too. It's a problem too. Now you right. gotta figure out a way to get yeah, them out of there. Sometimes you can get them out through this way. You know, sometimes you can blow air back in there and get mm -hmm. them popped out. But if they're jammed in there, the case is no good to you. Okay. You know, all this kind of. Yeah, this was a last minute thing. I asked yeah. him, don't you think he's not going to want this or dirty? And he said, well, we, we don't have time right now. If you want well, to take it there, I'm but just, it's going to cost more. I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah and you'd want all the studs out. No, no, so, no, no, you, you don't, no, you don't need to tell oh, okay. you don't, you don't need to, but, like if, this but, one, but right? if you're going to machine it for, for bigger, if you planned on getting, like you said, you wanted to do this one to 90, yeah, and a half, yeah. well then you, you should take these off because anything more I got to do, I have to take right, the labor yeah, for. Yeah, I understand. And that. taking all this stuff off at your shop yeah, is a lot is, cheaper for you. It's also going to tell you if there's if the, something yeah, wrong the, with these, then you could get that done savers, while it's here. Yeah. You know, there's just ways to go about it that you can look at it a little bit better before you travel all this way. Yeah, that was just a last minute thing. Let's you know, grab it and, you know, 
It's just magnesium sucks when it gets in water. Oh, uh, yeah. Know if, I don't know if you guys had any problems. Yeah, we but have. You'll get them where they'll rot right around here. Yeah. And I mean, they'll rot right so thin that they're junk. Mm -hmm. But any, any Your case. Anytime, yeah, my case. Anytime you get magnesium in water, see all this stuff. Really yeah, I good. had to polish this, mine all up with a Dremel. Home. Yeah. Get one of them uh, brake cylinder hones. Mm hmm. Little ball, little brake cylinder hones. Yeah. And you could go, you could go right through all that stuff right. with that. And it'll just be a lot easier. But all that stuff, because. That was the dirtiest go, one. Fred just brought them to my well, house the, same, the other but, day. But yeah. You have to go through all that before you even bring it to me because if. You go and you build all this stuff, and you get all this machined, and then you go and you stick a lifter in there, and the lifter and then it just drops right now. Mm -hmm. You throw the block away, and you already got all the machine work done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, see, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So I go through everything and just check them, and, and when they're junk, they go well, outside. And live and learn. Yeah. Load anchors. Well, no biggie. We need you to come up here anyways, and I need to know all this anyways. But it's not Rick's fault. It's not my fault. I don't know any better. No. 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 And you want to make sure that these are standard too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they, they do bore these, they do uh, line, line bore, bore these. Yeah, uh -huh. if, if they do, and you're rebuilding the motor for somebody else, you're probably gonna have problems because it's gonna have a hard time to make this to your cam gear uh -huh. without shimming. Right. You're doing weird stuff to it. And you know what? It's really not worth it if you're doing it for somebody else because by the time you get Scary all that outcome. stuff, well, it's just the thing is if, if it's gonna fail, that's where it's gonna fail. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. And they do, at, at Volkswagen, they had 10 or 12 different camshafts for each mm -hmm. motor, and they put them in, and if they didn't fit, they grabbed the next one, and there were different uh, thicknesses of the, where the So it's also a good idea if you're gonna store these, uh, I mean, and to keep that bearing with it, the, the main bearing you were saying, or both end ones, right yeah. here, to keep it with the case. It's nice to keep this one. And the only reason it's, it's like to say that the, the half moon one uh -huh. is because on the back of every half moon one, it's written the size. Mm -hmm. These aren't always written. Okay. They might be in a spot where they're I've not. I've seen that before. Yeah, I'm working with that. bearings right. and finding bearings. Yeah, you can grab this bearing here and, and you're not going to, you know, you won't find a, a marking on it anywhere. Mm -hmm. But these always have a marking, 025. Mm -hmm. So you know there's always, you know, it always gives you a size. Do you want to take that? See right here? Mm-hmm. You can tell it's never been cut. Which one? This? this? Oh, this case? That case, that, that's the one that wasn't cut. If, if you were just going by the by the thrust, mm -hmm. this case is still good. And that's the way to check the thrust. Mm -hmm. Put it in, put your, put your dowel so it's in the right spot. Push it all the way in there. You should mm -hmm. have no movement this way at all. It should mm -hmm. be tight. But you can still fail here, huh? Oh yeah, this yeah. Still, this one shot out. Yeah, it still fail. It, yeah. Even though the thrust is good, that doesn't mean the main line is good. Right. That's why I say it. Makes sense. If you keep the last bearing, it's going to tell you what the thrust is. That's right. the only reason I say. It. And see the difference? See how thick that right. is? See, and that's because it's already cut. Right. That won't go in there. So basically, if one of these is off, then all of them can be off, and yes. have a catastrophic. Right. Failure. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And this is definitely war. You know, and if you feel the rest of it, it doesn't feel bad at all. But this is definitely war. And so that, that kills the whole moved. case. Well, and, and once it's war that much, that means it's really moved around. So there's all there's probably Somebody's a problem. Well, there's probably a problem with how this stays torqued. Mm -hmm. After 50 years, the material just doesn't hold sometimes in here, you know, and mm -hmm. it's, without taking this out, drilling all that, heli coiling all that stuff you're looking at, by the time you did all that, you might as well buy a block, mm -hmm. you know, because if you had to heli coil every, every one of these, mm -hmm. you know, you're yeah, probably looking at 600 bucks, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because the coils are going to cost you 10 bucks a piece. Yep. And then by the time you do the labor and set it up on the machine to do it all, you know, you're, you'd be better off to buy a new case. Mm -hmm. Usually if you find one problem with a case, there's some other problems too. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's almost always the fact. If there's one problem mm. with the case, there's usually more than one. And you make sure that this isn't cracked because it, it, it likes to crack in here. Mm -hmm. That's that one, I didn't that's know that. One, that's number three. That's behind number three. Yeah, the hottest cylinder. On a good block. That'll be uh, on aftermarket block or... Uh, That's completely filled, that that'll area? Be, that'll be filled in, yeah. If you look on this, it's filled right in. Oh, yeah. There's no space there. Huh. I like that blue. As you start doing them, if you're going to build them and, and you're going to sell it like new motors, you're better off to just go buy a block. Mm -hmm. Just start from scratch. Basically, go new, go with the gusto, so go with the best. Charge more and 
worry less. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just sorry. That's just the way it is. Makes yeah. Sense. Every time you think you're going to give somebody a deal, it usually comes back to bite you in the butt. Yeah, this thing you would never even. He said because one. It's in the mud. You, you would never yeah, even be able to get this look. Yeah. That's your main oil galley. That's right. what goes up in through your cooler. That's that's your main problem. And, and here's another thing you want to do. When you want to check these, you want to really make sure you want to really check around this fitting because a lot of people screw these in and crack these, mm -hmm. crack where the oil pressure goes because right. they're always leaking there. So they figure, oh, they'll just tighten it a little more, yeah. tighten it a little more. Well, it's a tapered fitting, right? Like a pipe. All right. And if there's any, got any kind of cracks around it or up in here, no go. Junk. Uh, mm. Junk. There's nothing. You can't fix it. Mm -hmm. Just because of how much stuff I pulled out of this one passage here, I would never use this block. Yeah. Well, you know, Just because. Like hey, you too. might get it clean and think it's clean. And then all it takes you is. You only need this. If that goes through the bearing, anytime you see stuff like that plugged up in all your oil gas mm -hmm. and stuff, you probably want to stay away. You probably it. just want to stay away from it. Unless it's some kind of exotic so block that's worth a half a million dollars so that you need to fix. Mm -hmm. All right, man. So what's the problem here? Well, besides being so full of dirt and all the oil galleys and everything, you see the ridge on there. It's clearly 60,000 so and uh, 80,000 is as far as you can go. So Frank says this is junk and it is junk. I agree with him. What about this one? This one, it's just too... So this one's maxed out too. So both of these cases are unserviceable. So live and learn. We learn a little bit every day. So. We'll go back to the drawing board. Hey guys, it's Dalton. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Also, if you guys would like to support the channel, then check the link in the description to check out our merch. We have many different designs on many different cars that we have made videos on here on the channel. Also, if you guys want your car to be on one of our designs, then of course get in contact with us and we could possibly make that happen. Stay tuned for part two of this video on the 73 Super Beetle engine rebuild. In the next video, you'll be seeing a brand new case being built all the way from ground up, all the way to a great running engine. Also you'll be seeing me and my father drive the 73 super around and having a good old time so if you guys enjoyed this video drop a like comment subscribe and have a dress bugging of a day